Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Scarfinger, and this is Scarcasm. It is. Um, and um, I don't really have a whole lot to talk about this week. I mean, it's not like because here's the thing: I haven't done too much different. Like, I've I've watched some stuff, but it's uh-huh. the it's the same stuff that I've been watching. So it's not like it's not like it's anything uh, really kind of like crazy. I, well, actually, actually, I do have one thing that's new that I've watched. Okay. So I can I, I'll talk about that when we get there. Um. And yeah, Chase is in the building, of course, because he's already spoken. Yes, I am. And um, so how is how's your schedule change been? Um, it's been interesting. It's not as um over ninety as I thought it would be. It's more like just like staying up really late. Okay. You know, so it's like staying up till like two thirty in the morning. So I'm not really like having to switch my schedules around as much as I am having to just sleep in okay so That's, that doesn't sound so bad i wish i could sleep in every time every time i try to sleep in especially since i get my saturdays off now um like last saturday um i had this this i guess uh somebody passed away and his family came to empty out his storage unit but we're talking like five carloads of people and they're all family so apparently um at about 10 o'clock Saturday morning, because I went to bed late because I was uh, I was up with the fellas on the OFR game night. Um, okay. So uh, apparently at ten o'clock, uh, they decided to play fight. Right play out- fight. Yeah, they they wanted to play fight. Play fight right outside my window. Now my my apartment is on the ground floor. Now it used to be above the office, um, but now it's on the ground floor, and there's units right outside of my window. Uh, but Apparently, they wanted to play fight um, and just basically cause a ruckus at 10 o'clock in the morning after I was up pretty late. Oh. That was fun. And, and, and you know, I, I, and I've, I've said it so many times, I find it very difficult to sleep during the day. Okay. I like, like taking naps and stuff like that. So it's not like once I'm up, I'm up. And it's really difficult for me to go back to sleep. So, yeah, that was fun. So on days where I'm supposed to be able to sleep in, I can't really do that. Yeah, it, um... I have a problem with sleeping during the day too. I, I don't have a problem with like if I'm really tired, yeah, I'll I'll sleep in. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But if um, but if I'm up, if I'm really tired to where like I could need a nap and like I I would actually go to sleep. W- once I wake back up from that nap, I feel worse than I did before I went to sleep. <laughs> I've been there before. Yeah. Definitely it's been like, there before. It's like nauseating. I've definitely been there before. Where you you go to sleep and like what the fuck. Um, yeah, then everything from that morning feels like yesterday. It's really weird. Yes. Or, or like when old people like really believe that they made it to the next day when they wake up, when they go to bed or when they wake up, what, you know, is, is it tomorrow? Like I've had that happen, uh, t- you yeah. know, a couple family. And then, and then like in the, in the early days of my, uh, my serious depression, I used to wake up at like three thirty every night, just no matter what time I went to sleep. For some reason, I woke up at like three o'clock or three thirty, like every night. Huh? Yeah, but luckily for me, I had uh, I had two friends that I that um, I had two friends that worked nights, so like they were always up anyway. So um, so shout out to shout out to Marcus um, and shout out to Scott B Scott 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 yeah Scott Scott um, because he he used to um, uh, he used to work overnight at um the walls mark and they helped me maintain my sanity um during those days so that was awesome stalkers um so um how how was your how just in general how was your week it's it's been pretty good i um like i said i i I thought it was going to be this big adjustment because i i mean i used to like about 10 years ago I, i had a job with kmart and i um did the truck and sometimes i would stock at night and whenever I would do that, it would be from like, you know, that would be from like midnight to like five in the morning. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So um, that was like staying up all night and sleeping like it, that. That was your 9 a.m. is your 9 p.m. You know, you're having to get into that mindset. But um, but this not so much. I thought it might have been, but it, it's pretty cool. Little schedule got going on. Because I, I get most of my week done in the mor I mean, in the beginning of the week. So I was like trying to figure out. I need to take some days off because 
I'm gonna have too many. I'm going to overtime. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So um. Yeah, so, I, yeah I, have, I leave. I pretty much leave early every Friday these days. Um, because I'm the manager and I can do that. Um, but I leave early every Friday because I go to work much earlier than I used to. And at about like two o'clock every Friday, I'm already in. Right. So I just leave. Yeah. Cause I mean, if you get the, the 40 hours in, it's just with my job, I can't work over eight hours a day. Oh, I can't like, I mean, I guess technically I could, if I just under the table, but I would have to put it on a different day. You know what I mean? So that they just can't, I just can't do it more than eight hours a day. So to get my 40 hours, I would work, you know, eight hours for five days. And then, um, but sometimes if I had to leave early or what, or whatnot, I would just still say I left on time, but I would work like an hour later, another day. You know what I mean? Uh It's still technically I'm getting my hours. I, I just can't write it down that way. I so, I mean, I don't do that often, but I mean, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, the, um, so, so that's pretty much it. I mean, it's pretty much the same kind of schedule because I was still able to, because I had off Wednesday, you know, and we played Destiny until like two in the morning on um, Tuesday night. So that was. Yeah, we did. Yeah, that's something that we did do. We did play Destiny. Um, Destiny is pretty much the only game I'm still playing. So yeah. Oh no, I did. I did. I played a little bit of 2K. I played a little uh-huh. bit of 2K16, and then I, I then I switched to my Xbox and I played some. I played some. I was playing live during the game night because we we weren't really playing a game together. We were just all in the chat together. But I played some live um, on. On Friday night, I play a little. I played a smidge after. I'm getting close to. I'm about. Ha- I'm about halfway through my. Uh, I'm about halfway through my ten hour trial. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and then like uh, the Ace was like, um, you know, uh, Madden is free to play this weekend. I'm like, but I have access though. And then he was, and then um, Blue was like, well, you can get. Uh, live for thirty dollars on PSN uh, right now. It's on sale, and I was like, "But I have access though." And then it was just like every time they said something about an EA game, I'm like, "But I have access though." I think the last the last EA game I bought was Mass Effect, and I'm probably and that's to get access to. Yeah. So shout out to all of the people who have Xboxes or or PCs with uh, EA access or Origin access, and uh, they can play. I wish. Okay, here's one thing I wish. I uh-huh. wish. I wish that if I paid for one, I got both. I would. Right. Yeah. I mean, personally, I would spend. Uh, I, I kind of would spend sixty dollars uh, a year for for both. But the problem is, I know I'm not going to use the PC stuff that often, um, un- unless they did something like they put uh, the Sims in the the Origin Access. Well, Sims Four, not. Not the six three. Um, Maybe that's why they did it that way. You know, when you think of a subscription service, you think sixty dollars because you think PlayStation Plus, Xbox Gold, sixty dollars a year. But with EA Access, they were like, "Well, sixty dollars a year is is everything." Mm-hmm. But if you don't have a PC or if you don't have an Xbox, you can just pay half of that and just get it on the one you need. Yeah, but if that's the case, then they should be able to charge sixty dollars because because they yeah. um it because they are isolated to one platform like Xbox Live and PSN. Right. Wait, hold so, on. Uh, Did they, yeah, they, yeah, I agree they, that they should have a package to where you can just pay sixty dollars and get both. They they added the Sims Four at some point. Really? They added the Sims Four to the PC one. Um they you will have a trial when they add it to Xbox. They it's already it's already like listed in uh EA Access when they add it on Xbox you will get a trial. Um but yeah you I did I did not know that. So, and PlayStation? Um I don't know. I don't know if, if we were a gaming podcast we would know, but we're not. If we were a what podcast? I said if we were a gaming podcast we would know or not. <laughs> so we don't we don't do that research. We like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can look it up. Like, I mean, I can look it up now. Um, yes, it looks like it is coming to. Um, it looks like it is coming to uh, the PlayStation also. Right. But yeah, but but you won't get to. But you probably you won't get to trial because of course PlayStation doesn't have EA access. 
Yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering because Amber's really into The Sims, and, you know, she would be playing, like, Sims 3. Because I think she kind of likes Sims 3 a little bit more than 4, but it's not on the it's on the PS3, you know what I mean? Okay. So, oh, let me tell you. I was talking to I was talking to the homie Big Boy. Um Big Boy used to be around a while um and he's also he's also a listener to the Dream Team. Shout out to Big Boy. But he, um um Big Boy and I haven't really spoken spoken in quite some time. But um the the one of the nights that I that well the night what what night was it that we played um that we played the multiplayer and stuff on um nope. Destiny? Huh? That was Tuesday night. Okay, it was Tuesday night. So Tuesday night, um, I backed out of that party, and then I was in the party menu, and I clicked on his party by accident. And then he sent me a party invite back, and we talked for a little bit. Um, and always, um, Big Boy and I, every time we talk, it probably should be a um, it probably should be a show. Like it really uh-huh. should. Like let's the one of the most one of the 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 just kind of the funniest uh just random episodes um that that I ever put on the feed was the um the the you deleted my mew episode. And that was really just a conversation between us. It wasn't really a show. It was just like we were having a conversation and it was recorded. Like that's really mm-hmm. what happened. But like so we're talking and you know what he tells me? What's that? There is a pawn shop near him where he got a PlayStation 4 for like 100 bucks. And the Xboxes, the Xbox Ones, are like $90. Oh. Huh. And, you know, I, I know both both of us are kind of, kind of, uh, uh, will be in the market for Xboxes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought that I thought that was crazy. He's uh, he said that he might actually, you know, go get one and hold it for me until I send him the money. I gotta wait until I gotta wait until after you know the the end of the month and all of that kind of stuff, um, making sure that my baby got her uh, wing stuff straight. But I think I'm gonna do that, uh, and because I want I wanted to buy my daughter an Xbox in, in anyway. So this is this is actually pretty cool. Cool. I would. I mean, I. I don't know if anybody around here has one. I should start going to some pawn shop. Yeah, you might you might want to do the same if you can catch a good deal. Get an Xbox for a hundred. Yeah, I, I might buy my own Xbox back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it might actually be your Xbox. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I thought I thought that was kind of crazy that the price that the price on those came down so much because like you know these things are rather expensive, but apparently not. The pawn shops have so many of them. Um, the the price is pretty low if you go that way. I had a dream about that trailer and getting robbed last night. Really? Yep. I don't. I, for for the most part, I don't really remember dreams. Um, it's not something that I've ever done a whole lot of. Like I don't remember dreams at all. Uh, in a lot of cases. Um, so it, it does. That doesn't really happen. To me, mm. Which is kind of weird because. Um, I mean, you would you would think that you would actually remember stuff, but like I know that I'm dreaming. Yeah. So I don't know. Well. I- Sometimes it's um, if you wake up normal, like like you just wake up on your own, you're not gonna remember your dreams because you stop dreaming after a while, and then you'll just wake up and like the dreams that you have like like in deep sleep, you're not gonna remember. But then when you remember dreams, that's when you're woken up abruptly by alarm clock or something. Which I was, I had to get up early this, today, so and that's when you're kind of the, all the weird hot dreams happen <laughs> all right um so do we want to talk about um do we want to talk about anything else before we get into the things i mean it's it, it's kind of weird like i kind of like i never really thought about uh this is a conversation that i had with myself the other day um and uh-huh. yes and yes i was so bored at work i actually answered myself um but basically this show is kind of a what you've been playing like you know that what you've been playing section of of other people's podcasts that's bas- yeah. that's basically our podcast. <laughs> like the whole podcast. Yeah, it's like the it's- whole thing. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I have you know, Boo brings up stuff during uh during um you know facetious and stuff like that, and occasionally somebody will bring stuff up when we actually record a dream team. But um, but yeah, but this one is just all about what we what we've been doing. Uh, oh my god, facetious! This is the Seinfeld of the, the Seinfeld of the podcast. It's like 
he'll come up with like, "What's up with this airline food? Come on, Scar, tell me about this. You, you seen this shit? Yeah. <laughs> well, he wants some shit. Well, <laughs> you know. well, you know, the last the last show got us in a little bit of hot water. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about that. Uh, it's got, us, got us in a little bit of hot water. Um, so we ended up having, we ended up uh, uh, recording a um, supplemental episode um, because we, you know, we were talking about the whole kneeling thing. Um, and we had a couple of emails sent in uh, about it. And uh, appar- apparently we, you know, we were trying to, we were trying to crunch for time. So he just kind of read, you know, just was trying to hit points of the email and it didn't quite work out that way because, you know, the, the, the email senders felt like their uh, points weren't accurately addressed. Uh huh. And then like all of that went away doing a noisy cricket thing. Yeah. Which I don't give. I don't care what nobody say. That shit was fun. The noisy crickets thing was hilarious to me. Like I was, I was having all like after having that really serious conversation about all of this, like kneeling and the anthem and the military and all of this stuff, and then like accidentally falling into the noisy crickets conversation is one of the best things about podcasting. Right. Like, cause I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I didn't know that it was going to, you know, I didn't know it was going to fall into that territory. I didn't even think that was going to happen at all. We were really wrapping up the show. And then I just kind of went off on a tangent about the smaller condoms. And then it just created the whole noisy crickets thing. <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of awesome. Um, so, but yeah, if, if you don't know, if you don't know what we're talking about, um, uh, go listen to Last Facetious and uh, the upcoming retraction. I thought it was up already. Apparently, it is not. Yeah, I would have had, um, yeah. Oh, wait, uh, it might be. Yeah. It might be. Yes, it, it, it is up. Okay. It well, went, I, it went I up today. Feed in, um, in the morning and, you know, I had plenty of podcasts for today, so I haven't updated it yet. So Yeah. All right. So what do you want to tackle first? Uh, do you want to just tackle games? Because I only really have one. Game. Well, well, well. Those, well, those games. Well, those. I, I played a lot of Destiny, but the other stuff I played a little bit. Yeah, we can go into games because it's a little bit shorter. I mean, we have been watching so, some stuff, yeah, and uh, yeah, all of the shows. Cool, but yeah, Destiny Tuesday night was really fun because because that's kind of where you know, and I, I think you're in the two seventies, two eighties. I'm, right. in the, I'm in the two seventies with two cat, uh, two characters. I have not hit two eighty yet because when I hit like two, I can't, I can't really get over the hump uh, mm-hmm. of of the two seventy range. Like it took me a long time for my warlock to get over. Um, and is it weird that I keep, I keep trying not to call them wizards, but um, um, I mean same kind of thing, right? But um, right. but my warlock, I, it took me a long time to get over the. The 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 two sixty five hump. I am now yeah. like a two seven. I'm two seventy two ish, and I think my uh, conservative American Titan is two seventy. Um, and then and then my my um my hunter who I just started is. It, I hate it. I I do not like it. It was when we played, and I was playing with my warlock again. It felt so right. Right. <laughs> Even the, the only thing I missed about another character is there's one um there's one uh subclass where you can have two grenades with the with the Titan. That's the mm-hmm. only thing that I missed about the Titan. And punching people in the face with a Titan is awesome. Because he he's is is like he's like Mr. One Hit a quitter. Yeah. You just I mean you just when you're like reloading and they're just rushing you, um you just you just start punching people in the face, like punching those little dog things or the what's it called the thralls or whatever. Um, yeah, just just keep punching them in the face, and then you just keep. I mean, you just maneuver around a little bit. I totally just knocked that down. Um, you just because I'm actually bobbing and weaving, right? but you just kind of move around, bob and weave, and just start punching stuff in the face, and it's kind of awesome. Yeah, because um, yeah, actually, all the melees are pretty good. Like the um, no, the the Titan melee is is so much better. The hunter melee is kind of cool because you just stab people, in, you just stab people in the face. Yeah, yeah. The hunter's melee is just your your classic Call of Duty knife, and then um, 
the uh, you know warlock just slaps them. Yeah. <laughs> but warlock's got distance. Yes. That's the one thing with the warlock. Warlock does have distance because it's almost like a force push sort of. Yeah. The the only thing I don't like I don't like anybody else's jumping. I like my floaty jumps, and I wish there was an option to have floaty jumps with the other two. Mm-hmm. I died a lot as a titan. Um, and early on as a hunter trying to figure out the jumps. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'm I'm still enjoying the game, even though like we I play multiplayer for the first time with you. I never played multiplayer before, and I've still never done um, the nightfall yet. I wanted to do the nightfall that night, but you, you said that the uh, the uh, which kind of was stupid, like the 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 settings, you know, because they do weird settings with the and the setting was stupid. Well, um, what I just don't like that. Sh- that particular strike and the strike that we're talking about is the Exodus Black strike. I don't know. I like that strike. I just don't like it for the nightfall, just for how it's built. That strike, you'll you'll be fighting some enemies and then you'll get on your sparrow and then you're having to drive for a while and then you'll be fighting another a tank and then you'll be driving for a while and then once you finally get to the boss, he's like disappearing and reappearing and like there's shanks and then there's the floors electric and. It's a long strike to be timed. I mean, some of the other ones we were able to just rush past in because that's one thing you kind of have to do with the nightfall is just if you can get past enemies, get past them, unless it's something that says kill this thing, then you kind of have to to get to the part. But that that's just not a very good strike for that that setup. So I was like, well, let's do the let's do the nightfall on another week to where it's not just not that one. Like personally, I mean, it, you might. I, I did see the clan did the nightfall, so I mean, it can be done. I, I just knew that you know, it's you haven't did it before, and I haven't actually beat that one on the nightfall yet. So I, I'm pretty sure we wouldn't have been able to get, get through it. So it would just been a bad time. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, I, are you are you even going to try the prestige raid? Because I heard that you don't actually get anything other than like. You you only get cosmetic stuff for doing it. Like you don't get any like new guns or anything. Just it's just cosmetic stuff. Um, maybe <laughs> I haven't even done the raid like the, the regular raid yet. So uh, I mean, I've been in there. I haven't completed. Oh, it. you haven't finished it. Yeah, I, I yeah I don't I don't I don't see myself. Well, at some point. I guess I'm gonna try to raid. I mean, but of course I can't even I can't even attempt it until I'm 280. But I'm stuck in the low 270. Um, so I'm so I guess when I finally get up to 280, I will attempt it with a group. But like, just like when we were playing the multiplayer, like because I haven't played any multiplayer, like I was getting tore up. Like it, it was not fun at all. Even though I mean, well, no, the control was not fun at all. When we played some straight up killer, that was fun. Cool. I like, yeah. I like I like playing straight up killer. I'm not really a fan. I'm not really a fan of Virginia. I'm just not. Right. Yeah, it's just with um Destiny, it's like um, unlike when if you're playing Call of Duty or something, you can say, Oh, I wanna do Team Deathmatch or I wanna do Capture the Flag or, or I don't even remember the Call of Duty game <laughs> but, um Domination. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> but yeah. So yeah, domination is pretty much what control is, and then it, it, it um in Destiny you just pick he, here's here's quick play here's competitive they 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 do it kind of like almost in an Overwatch type way to where it's just two things and it kind of mixes different yeah, game it, modes together. If that was quick play. I definitely don't really want to go to comp- other than just to get the you know the milestone it's, for competitive right play. yeah. Because once you once you get the um, milestone for competitive done, it unlock a milestone called um called the arms, I think, and that's that would be another weekly milestone that you can do every week to get yourself some good loot. So 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 that did open it up a little bit for me once I finally did some crucible. Is now I have clan XP, the um the flashpoint, and now crucible. So I have three opportunities to get get high level luminous ingrams in um so so that's cool it, it, and you don't have to win you just have to play until you get them the mouse on yeah that's the, Which, that's the cool part um um I, I, that's the cool part about it like they're not saying oh you gotta win too yeah. just just play too so that's cool i mean i would just go into the competitive just to get my ass whooped and just after i do those two I'll, right yeah 
And and also, I, I may have said it on the podcast before, but the, the trek from 265 to 280 is tough. It's like it goes real slow bet- between 265 and 280 because 265 is pretty much when the when the blue stuff and the stuff from the vendors stop being above your level. So, but late, but ever since the last update, now my my vendor stuff is like is is like two seventy and such. Right, it, it'll they'll they'll bump up, but they'll never be higher than your your overall light level or your overall power level because I have had it happen to before to where like I would have one thing that's like really high and it's bumping up my power level pretty high, but then I have like a bond that's like kind of low mm-hmm. and then I will actually get a blue that's higher like a blue bond that's higher than my bond but it's not higher than my overall power level but it still helped me out because you know it's but it is slower but once you get to 280 you'll get to where you can start creating legendary mods and all of a sudden it's like I turned 280 and all of a sudden I was 290 in no time because of the freaking mods and stuff yeah. that I could because I, I had so many blue mods saved up to where I could, I, I just went in and made so many legendary mods. It wasn't even funny. Yeah. But, I can't wait till I turn to so I can. But yeah, they, they definitely help out. And and it, it did make confu- infusion a little bit tougher to where. But I realized if you have a mod on what you're trying to keep, that mod will stay. Right. Like it will go into the mod that you're, the, whatever. It'll just stay on there. But if you have two mods, it's like they fuse into one another, you know? So sometimes it can almost make it even bigger. Because I've had, like, like say I had a 270 that had a had a, had a a 5 mod on it. It's a 275. And then I found a 275. And I put that 275 into, this two, into the 275. It's going to make it a 280 because of the mod. Because it's going to make it a 275 plus the mod. But... But yeah, so so that's pretty much Destiny um, on Tuesday night is just doing our milestones, and you know that was it's always kind of fun, you know, when Tuesday comes around and you're like, oh man, we have so much to do again. But then it's kind of cool that you know in Destiny One it was like you had all these dailies to do and it was doing the same thing over and over again. And I, I don't like dailies. I, weeklies is where it's at because I can. Even if it is grindy, like I have a bunch of stuff to do once a week, and once that's over with, I, I mean, I can go and help out people, but I can go play whatever, you know, I'm, or watch something. I don't feel like I'm missing out just because I'm not playing Destiny every waking hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, that's pretty much the games. Um, no, it's not pretty much the games. I, I did, unless you. If you, unless you want to go into something else you played, no, I did. No, I, re- I, I very much, I, I very much still enjoy playing live over two K, and I just wanted to say that it, live is really stinking and uh, enjoyable. It's no, it's not as good as two K, um, the animations and such, but it's a much more fun. Game. And then, like, I had a, I had a moment where you know, you don't. You don't actually buy virtual currency like you do in 2K, but you earn points and then you buy these like loot boxes. And there's a bunch of different lo- little loot boxes. And like, um, you can see what's in them. Mm-hmm. So you can see what, the, you know, there's like, a, you know, there's like a few things, uh, like, you know, like 20 things in, the, I'm, I'm, I may be exaggerating, but it's like 20 things in this box. And you, you know, you get one of them random. So I, I just kept spending my money on this one box. It had these like ugly tank tops. It was just like white tank tops with like a color rings around your, your arms and your neckline. And then they had like some sweatpants, which was really what I was trying to get. I just wanted a pair of the sweatpants. And like they gave me all of the fucking tank tops. Like I'm like, bruh, can you just? It, is this random? Because this can't be random because I'm just getting all of the fucking tank tops right. So, but other, but it's still a more enjoyable thing than buying virtual currency. Still. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Because I was wondering if um why 2K was getting reviewed higher than um than live, even though 
I've heard so much shit on 2K lately. Well, well, the the shit that's coming from 2K is all about transactions. That's all it is. The game is not bad. It is, uh, except for uh, a lot of people say that the shooting is off. Well, even if you have a highly ranked up character, you're just missing wide open shots for no reason. Um, but you know, people have a problem with that. But other than other than that, the game is still actually pretty. Damn. A lot of people are pissed off about the microtransactions. Even people who don't play the game. Huh. Seems to be a big topic on the internet these days, on especially on YouTube. I'm like, you know, like these people are admitting they don't play the game, but they're still commenting about some shit that's been in the game for a while. And I've said it before, but like 2K did some dirtbag shit this year. Um, a little bit more than they did before, but it still doesn't change the fact that this has been this way since 2K11. Right. So, all right. Um, you said what? Else, what else you want to talk about game wise? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Since it was Halloween, Overwatch did their whole like Halloween thing or whatnot, and it was back to doing because I, I had got it after Halloween, so I, I actually didn't get to play that that event last year so this year i actually got to play it and um the first time i played it out it was really it was really cool but then the, t- today i got really frustrated and um it, well first of all this is a co-op it, it's pve you know it's like this little game mode it, halloween centric to where you know different heroes and heroes or villains in the game are like you know one of them's like a frankenstein type character and then Dr. Junkenstein, he's like, you know, like, well, Frankenstein, and then one is a Frankenstein's monster, and then, you know, it's just different Halloween type stuff, and they're like throwing, like, if the robots are coming at you, and but they're like dressed up like zombies and stuff, so it's just like a little fun thing that you can do in like a wave defense. But the whole point is to keep the zombie things away from this door, and if they break through the door, you know, the door has a meter, a life meter. And once they break through the door, you know, you, you get defeated. First time I played it, you know, we were killing everything fine. And the door we didn't even hardly take any damage. We hardly weren't even dying. And then, you know, victory. I got it. So I was like, well, that was fun. You know, I, did, I played it on the easiest difficulty, which was normal. And um, But then the day I was like, it's going to play some more. Every match we failed it. And I'll play with different people. Still failed it. It's like people, I would be the only one near the door, and everyone's like wandering around, killing enemies and dying, like, in, a, in an area I couldn't heal them good and stuff, and it was like, every match was like that. Even if I went to another, I was like, did people just forget how to play it? Like, what's the, like, I can almost see if this was a multiplayer or a PvP match, people aren't playing the objective because they're trying to get kills. But kills in this don't matter. I mean, it's just, just killing the zombie things. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like this fun thing. What you what you get out of things is, you know, completing the match. So you can get your... That's how you get your loot boxes, is completing the match. Every three... Um, every three um, Junkenstein things you, you um, complete and win, you get a loot box. And I didn't win one today and we we played like 10 times and i even got surgeon that that's what we did his surgeon was like well i'll help you out and then he come in i was like that, that's why i was like hey well let's do it in nine even us we, he was like wow this is harder today i don't know what's going on but it was like nobody was doing the the objective everyone was like going out and getting themselves killed i was like wow great guys way to make something that was supposed to be just this fun thing to be something frustrating <laughs> but so but but yeah if you if we had like a like it's it's a four player thing so if we had like a, four players that we can actually talk and say hey there's a there's a tire coming down the right side kill it or you know would not let's stay by the door or anything just any sort of communication would have been a lot better than what it was but i don't know because in, in pretty much every time we would be playing someone would if a certain amount of damage got on the door, people would just leave, just straight up, just quit. <laughs> and I'm like, and, and there's a thing called play of the game in, in Overwatch where it, it'll show like the most kills in a certain amount of time for a certain person or whatnot. And Amber said, I think that was a little kid 
because it was the play of the game, yeah, they, they got a lot of kills in that with, with their super or whatever. But after they did that, they were, like, looking at the ground, and then they were, like, spun around, was, like, looking at the sky and stuff. <laughs> so I was like, so every time we've been... So I was wondering, maybe since it's, like, this kind of kitty, not kitty, but it's, you know, happy-go-lucky halloween theme thing, that people were just, like, putting their kids on it and being like, hey, you know, be quiet and, you know, play this Halloween thing in my Overwatch game for a while. <laughs> so the whole day I was just a babysitter. Pretty much. And yeah, see, I know I know very little about Overwatch. That's why I was pretty much quiet through all of that. I know very yeah. little about Overwatch, and I just really don't know. <laughs> when it yeah. comes to Overwatch, like, people speak so highly of it, but I can't bring myself to care about Overwatch. Yeah. It would be a lot cooler, even though I did get frustrated today, but it would be a lot cooler if they had more stuff like the stuff today, like I, I know today was it, it's Halloween or it's that's a seasonal mode, but that one that we played earlier in the year, remember with the robots and stuff, the Omnic Uprising. Remember, we didn't that you play that. You played that. I was watching. Right. Okay. Well, I, I've, it, never, it was I've the, never played Overwatch. I've never cared. I was I was referring to myself as we. It was the um the royal we or whatever. <laughs> if you would get the fuck out of here with that. You know, like, we don't do this type thing. <laughs> we don't hit people, you know. <laughs> but, but anyway, something like that, that that's not seasonal, like, uh, <clears throat> in a certain season or, like, a holiday. It, it was just, like, actually, that was canon within the story of Overwatch that there's, you know, the the uprising of the Omnics or whatever. So they could have had that in there all the time and had people that – like to play some PVE stuff can play some PVE stuff and people that want to play PVP can do that. I mean, yeah. they have had more variety like that. I mean, I know the PVP is super big and it is fun if you had like a, a good group of people that can communicate and stuff, but sometimes it's kind of cool to just turn your brain off and kill some robots. Okay. All right, so um, after we done bored everybody who doesn't play Overwatch or um, Destiny to Tears, uh, you want to get into it? Sure. You want to go first? Um, you can go first since I just talked a lot just now. Okay, um, all of the um, DC TV shows are back, and shout out to the homie Mike J, because the homie Mike J heard the last episode and said, you know there's a CW app that's free, and it's for Xbox, right? I was like, Really? Um, so I downloaded that. That it actually works. It's actually free, but there's a fuck ton of commercials. Like it's a whole lot of commercials. And what makes it worse is it's the same handful of commercials over and over. <laughs> yeah, that don't sound fun. <laughs> Even there's there's times where the same commercial played back to back. Like, bruh, it's so many commercials and like playing on um you know, watching stuff on Netflix and stuff like that has really got, and then watching stuff on like the Fire Stick and stuff, that shit really got me spoiled because I cannot fucking right. Like I just can't. Like I just can't fucking do commercials. Like this shit sucks. But I got through it, and I'm I'm watching all four shows on. Um, I'm watching all four of the CW uh, DC shows. Um, I have not caught up with anything else other than that. But, you know, there's there's new shows that I want to watch, like the X-Men joint and the Inhumans joint that I want to watch. I heard Mr. Robot is either back or is coming back. Um, you know, like, there's some other shows that I want to check out, but I'm probably going to have to hook my alpha up and see if I can get this Cody thing going. Maybe. Yeah, but I haven't hooked up my alpha in, in, in a little bit. Um, but, yeah, uh, but I've been watching those. I have watched already um, the new season of um, uh, um, I watched the new season of uh, uh, Voltron. Voltron. There we go, Voltron. I watched the new season of Voltron, and I like it, but I'm getting sick of six episode seasons for shows that are half. Right. If the show was an hour. I probably would feel a little bit different about, it, but because that's um a show and that's like the difference in six hours and three hours. Exactly. I, mean, I I watched the the first time I sat there to watch it. I literally watched the first four episodes straight, like because it was it was no time to do that, you know. Right. It's just, that's like a movie. It's just, it's but so and that sucked. 
And um, you will probably be happy about this, but kind of not because it's not very good. But I watched the episodes of Neo Yokio. You watched that? You watched episodes of what now? Neo Yokio. Neo Yokio. Isn't that the one with Jaden Smith? Yep. Where he's like this, like oblivious, like just the stupidest main character ever, and he's like super rich, and everything's about fashion or something. Yep. <laughs> And the 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 Bodega Boys play uh, uh, m- uh, main characters in the show. Um, and uh, um, what's his name is the robot. Uh, I'm like, um, what's his name? Jude Law, I think, is like the robot. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how the fuck did you get Jude Law just to play a fucking robot in this? <laughs> which is which is weird because there's spoiler about halfway through. That's like, are you fucking serious? Like. That's weird. Um, I mean, I'm not going to spoil it, but like, you find out something. Uh, you find out something halfway through the season, and it's just like, huh, that's odd. But, um, but yeah, it's it's. I, I don't really, I don't really do the anime thing. I just found it interesting that um, that that Jesus, that Jesus and Mero were voicing characters, and that's the only reason why I watched it. Mm-hmm. Um, I you know I don't really care about Jaden Smith like Jaden Smith I I don't think there's anything that he's ever played in that it was like yep I gotta see that like I saw Karate Kid and I was like eh. <laughs> um, I never watched the other movie with the one with him and his father even though I was kind of interested in the movie but then it got everyone just trashed it and they said it was so terrible was it After Earth yeah or whatever is is that really the name of the shit yeah it's it's called After Earth. Okay, because then, because then I was, it, it made me think of Titan A, um, which is weird. Because why would you call that? And it's the same thing as Titan A, but um, which was a great, which was great at the time. I wonder how great, I wonder how great Titan A E is now. Right, because that's a uh, what's his face, um, dude who did a uh, dang, can't even think of his name now. He was like a big competitor to um Disney. He did like Anastasia and stuff. Dom Bluth. Yes. Yeah, I just pulled it up right when you said it. Yes. I mean, I enjoyed that at the time. I wonder how much I would. Right. And you said you're not really that nostalgic. So nostalgic, like, you, you know, you could watch something that you were you liked when you were a kid, but then you nostalgia is not going to make you think. Right. Because I, I know I know as a kid, uh, one of my favorite movies of all time is dropped in. Uh huh. But I refuse to watch it now because I will not. Because I know that if I watch it now, I will hate it. Amber loves that movie. It's one of my favorite movies Drop of all Dead. time. Drop Dead Fred. Is is one of my favorite movies of all time. Drop Dead Fred, The People Under the Stairs, and um, and uh, A Long Kiss Goodnight are some of my favorite movies. I wouldn't call them the best movies of all time, but they are some of my favorite. Yeah, that, that was one thing that I was... um, We were doing a podcast back in the day called Rock of Sea, me and my friend Max. We did... Three episodes, and on the fourth episode, we got some more people involved, mm-hmm. and we thought that was going to be a good idea. To end, it ended up to where we never recorded the episode ever again. And um, but it, that it was because so. it, it was because we um the other guys. I mean, they, I mean, they're good guys. It's just they kind of got in over like over trying to do the thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so we were trying to like it was a film type podcast, but we were going to like pretty much overhaul it to be like this thing that it, we weren't. It was more like like this at first, where we just talk. We would come up with a topic or whatnot, but we would just we would just kind of ramble about it. But th- they were going to try to be more professional about it, and we just <laughs> didn't have the time on our hands to do that. But anyway, the um the whole thing with that. One reason I brought it up is because we were trying to figure out everyone like say their favorite movie, you know, and I was like, you know, as a person who really likes movies and film and stuff, you don't really have a favorite. You know what I mean? Because the whole old saying was, you know, if you have a favorite song, you're not a fan of music. If you have a favorite movie, you're not a fan of movies. You know, I have favorites. (laughs) I have favorites in categories like the three movies that I just named are all in completely separate categories from each other. Yeah, because what I what I said, I, I was like, what I can say is a favorite movie is just think of what was my favorite movie when I was a kid. So I just said, OK, just jot down Ernest Goes to Camp for me. <laughs> so, <that> was, <laughs> really? Yeah. 
So uh, well, the, well, those movies were the first couple of movies were really funny, and then the, then it just kind of got old. Yeah, it was just like. Ernest goes to Mars. Like, why the fuck is Ernest going to Mars? Like that type of thing. Yeah, my, my favorite Ooh, joke. Speaking of, um, speaking of that, uh, one of my one of my movies when I was a kid was fucking Space Camp. I, I actually never seen Space Camp. It, it, Space Camp is like really fucking old. Like you're 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 a young dude, so yeah. Uh, but like, yo, know, Space Camp is was like everything. It came out in '86. Yeah. Like that movie came out eighty six, and that shit was I mean, that shit was everything for for a young me because like you got these young people who got sent to space by accident. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like that's you know they were at a space camp and they got they got uh, sent to and they got sent to space when the shuttle was really launched into orbit. That's pretty much the that's pretty much the tagline. And like, kind of uh, I just pulled it up. Like young young attendees of a space camp find themselves in space for real when their shuttle is accidentally launched into orbit. Like yo, I just said that without reading that, and that's the actual thing that they said about the fucking movie. <laughs> and it has yeah, the, it has the, it has the whole thing like with the cute little robot and stuff like that. It's a is like if you're a kid and you watch that movie, like that's totally your shit. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm I'm I cut you off. Well, no, that's no, cool. I, I was just saying that rem- that kind of remind the premise of that, not the whole premise, but it sort of reminds me of um, this phone game I played called. Um, it was like this text adventure. Oh, the, what, what was the, that game called? The one that I told you. No, I, I played it. You sure about and, that? Yeah, I <laughs> yes, I um I, I played this phone game like um last year, and it was um. It was like this person, and they were they got stranded on this planet. Are you certain this is not something that I told you about? Because I totally played this shit, and I I was all about it for for quite some time. Lifeline, that's what it was called. Yeah, I did. I did two of the. I, well, I did three of the Lifeline games. One of them I never actually solved. Uh, the second, the second one with the same with the same guy from the first game. Um, mm-hmm. I never, I never actually got him out of that safely. Right. And now there's like a bunch of them. Like there's, there's like a bunch of lifeline. Games. But yeah, that was the whole thing, to, you know, to where it was like, there. He was basically a student, and then, it, then all of a sudden, everything just got real. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. Or an intern or something. But but anyway. But yeah. Yeah, I have, I have, I have Lifeline, Lifeline, uh, Silent Night, which is the second part of his story, and then I have Lifeline Two, which is a completely different story with, that deals with like magic and shit. And then they started releasing other Lifeline games, but what these assholes did, they stopped making them a dollar. That's the reason why I stopped playing them because they stopped making them a dollar. Uh huh. Because that's why I bought Lifeline because it was a fucking dollar. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. I don't even know where we how how we got. To oh the, wait, they made was, a they made a lifeline game that's a uh, that's a endless runner type game. That's weird. That's like not what the other games are at, at, at all. No, it's not. I'm looking at it. I'm like, it's the the company is called Three Minute Games. But yeah, apparently they made a lifeline that is uh that is like a endless runner or something. That's like saying we're making a gone home game, but it's sort of like a a Twitch like trials type shooter. Yeah. It's like <laughs> you no, know? no. It's basically we made, we made gone home, but we actually put the sci fi elements that that we kind of put that we kind of you know kind of suggested in the game that never showed us. <laughs> That's the only problem that I have with that's the only problem that I have with God. that and the fact that I didn't figure out most of that shit on my I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, I figured out most of it on my own. That they was I I normally never just sit down with a guide, you, you know. But I will like if I fell enough to where I, I was like, I'm completely stuck. I'll I'll look at just that one thing, you know, because I don't really want anything spoiled and stuff. So um so that's what I'll do, you know. If but that's like my last resort, you know, because if like if you're stuck for so long in a certain thing and you finally figure it out, like like if you're playing Portal or something and you finally figure it out on your own, dude, you feel like the smartest person on the planet. Right. <laughs> you know? No, no, no. I needed a guide for the last the last part of Portal. Like that that last one where, you know, the the last room and then everything, then the whole game fucking changes after that. Like I uh-huh. needed a guide to get through that shit because I was not. Right. That was so good, though. Like, 
like back in the day, like I was just it like blew my mind how like yeah, I, there was some there were some of the puzzles that gave me a little bit of motion sickness. And I'm still yeah. I'm still susceptible um to some of that a little bit, and like the ones where you gotta like um fling yourself back through holes and then flip around and you know just to build up momentum and shit. Like I, yeah, yeah, some of those were just like oh, it'd be sick. Um, but other than that, I I figured out most of uh Portal by myself until I got to that last part and I was like, I would have never figured this shit out. Yeah, and Portal 2 has even more trickier stuff because there's more to deal with, like with the with the different paints and stuff. I never finished it. Do you know what happened with me with Portal? I played it and I wasn't in the right mind to play it. So I got stuck pretty early on like some of the light bridge stuff. Uh-huh. And I just said fuck it. And I never went back. Well, Valve games in general kind of make you nauseous, don't they? Well, Half Life does. Portal, I'm usually okay unless there's a lot of like flipping around. And oh, okay. then there's and there's a lot of games where if you jump from a like a really high area, um, and you know, like there's there's some stuff like um like Crackdown. You know, you could jump from like off the top of a building and you know, and you can go down pretty far as long as you got a leveled up character. Um what I do is I uh, just I just close my eyes and listen to when they when they hit the ground. Uh huh. And that's what I have to do because I will feel sick as hell. Yeah, so, I never played a Crackdown game. Oh my god, you should totally play Crackdown One. They, it's that's still not backwards compatible. I'm not sure. I don't I don't think so. Um, but Crackdown Crackdown One is the game that nobody expected to be any good. Uh, but that shit was so much fun. And, like, if you have any kind of that completionist thing in you, you would very much want to collect all of the agility orbs. Right. But it's but it's one of those things where that game had no business being as fun as it is. And I like the fact that basically your character is just like a superhero in training. Like, you start off with a relatively small... Um, and, like, the more you level up the character, the larger... Uh, the larger in, uh, that the character becomes, like the character physically changes depending on the things that you level. Because, like, I would, I would go back and I would play the game uh, with someone because you can play with one other person. I would go back and play the game with somebody who hadn't played before and they had just pretty much starting out, and they were like, "Holy fuck! Why is your character so much larger than me?" <laughs> like, yeah, it just kind of happens when you play the game. Um, it's the, the the it's a cool game, but there's very little replayability. And like outside of once you finish the game, outside of collecting the agility orbs, there really isn't anything else you can do. And that's the reason why when I worked at GameStop, there was a million um in the back, like a million. Because of course we all bought the game because it had the Halo Three beta. Um, mm-hmm. it, you know, you buy the game, it has the Halo Three beta on the disc. So as soon as that beta was over, a lot of people traded that game in. But I had a lot of fun. If they if they make that back compat, I would totally I would totally play it again. I would love to play it again from scratch because once once your character is level up, like you can reset everything, uh, reset uh-huh. all of the enemies and such. But it but once your character is very much leveled up, it's mm, it's kind of too easy. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, and then I, I also like the thing about like if you level up your driving skills when you get into one of their cars, like the the agent cars, the car itself levels up too. Like the car becomes more badass the, the higher your driving skill is. Huh? Yeah, That's- yeah, it's really fucking cool. But it's only like their agent cars. It's not the. It doesn't do that for all of the other cars that you can get into. But once you level up your your agility and stuff like that. You run so fast you don't need a fucking car anymore. Which is the same thing that happened when they did all of this over again for Saints Row. Like, Saints Row is about driving to different places, but, you know, Saints Row 4, they basically made Crackdown in the Saints Row kind of universe. Um, And, you know, there's, like, car races and stuff like that, but why the fuck would I do a car race if I could just run really fast where I'm going? Right. Because the only thing I would get in, since everything was pretty much like, why would I get in these, like, little normie cars when I can have a freaking alien spaceship and just, you know what I mean? I didn't play like much. I, I, I didn't I didn't make it to the spaceship part. I, I didn't play much of uh, uh, Saints Row 4 because I didn't like it. Yeah, pretty much any car that you get in, you, you pretty much have. like, And you can, like, get in it. 
you can like spawn it at any time. You know what I mean? It they they took a lot of the fun out to where I mean I don't mind like the enemies going down easy mm-hmm. or like combat being sort of easy because I I'm not really about frustration, but they made it too easy in a way to where here's everything that you can possibly do. You don't have to work for anything. You know, I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know? So, so why am I playing this? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's, let's go ahead and get through what you're watching and then we're going to go ahead and close this out because we're, we're already, okay. we already had enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, we've been, we've been going through for a little bit more to where we watched, um, on well actually this wasn't on verve on on friday the 13th on our anniversary we watched the first friday which was you know you know with jason's mother and um because we we have a dvd set that has all the well we have the one for the freddies and we have the one for the for the okay so Fridays. this is this is weird right i'm gonna tell you you said you were, oh, you were watching friday the 13th and then you said you went back and watched the first friday so as a black person i thought that you meant that you went to watch like the movie friday so <laughs> and then, then you said with jason's mother and i was like was there a different name jason and Friday? like that's totally where i went with this <laughs> yeah sorry about that like i, I just so, sometimes i'll abbreviate things that makes it no 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 no. i understand how that made total sense to you but it didn't make very much sense to me right but if i didn't know what what i was talking about like if like if you were saying it uh, or or if someone else was saying i would have probably thought the same thing because i mean we own well well, the first friday is the only one we own but but still but okay (laughs) but yeah because i I I mean i I thought the whole thing about it it being his mother is kind of a spoiler is it I, I've never seen it. I don't. I mean, the well, only, only one that I've ever really watched in this entirety was Jason X, which I still find. It, okay, yes, it, yes, it's a spoiler alert from a movie from 1980 that pretty much anybody that knows anything about Friday the Thirteenth knows that already. <laughs> but well, if you, did, if you didn't it, know it, you know it because of Scream. Yeah, yeah, and right, and and if you didn't. If you haven't seen any of the Friday the 13th movies, you probably never will because <laughs> pretty much <laughs> you know? that's where I am right now. I only seen Jason X, which I still see the most unintentionally funny movie. But yeah, the um I, I would say my I could go on a little thing. The um my my favorite Friday the thirteenth movies would be probably probably four is just overall a pretty good slasher movie and it has good characters like the um like I like I said before, you know um, George McFly and all that, and it's the first one. It's the one with Corey Feldman as um as a uh, as the kid in the movie, oh, um, Tommy Jarvis. Which you know, in in the Friday the Thirteenth movies, there's kind of like three trilogies that go on a little bit. You have you have two, three, and four, which is you know Living Jason trilogy, and then the four, five, and six is the Tommy Jarvis trilogy. Because they all have that same character, even though they're played by different people. And then six, seven, and eight is Zombie Jason trilogy. And then after eight, you know, you get into the the really ridiculousness, like Jason goes to hell and Jason X. But still, but, you but can break you're, them. you're explaining all of this like I'm. <laughs> <laughs> but continue. Do you think? Hey, I mean, well, there might be a listener. There might be a listener that cares. Like so, do it. Do it for the listeners. Don't do it for me because I have nothing to add other than sarcasm or right. sarcasm, huh? Yeah. yeah. Huh? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that you um meant that as a pun when you first thought of that thought of, thought of the name of the show. <laughs> well, the name of the show it ended up being that because I was typing sarcasm, but I was spelling it sarcasm by accident. And uh-huh. then I was in a live I was in a live stream for I was in a live chat uh for another podcast. One of the podcasters noticed that I spelled it wrong, but he thought I did it on purpose. Uh-huh. And so that's where the sarcasm came. Cool. But yeah, I, I'm really into that um like kind of campy stuff and um you know, but I, I would say my favorite ones is four just because it's just you, you know, just a really good slasher movie and then three because you know it's the first time he gets hockey mask nice clean cool looking hockey mask and then probably six just because it's so goofy you know it's the first time he's, zomb- he's a zombie and you know it's just 
is something that movie is almost a comedy. Like it's got slapstick humor in it. And if, and if you're around people that don't like a bunch of nudity, it, that, that's the only movie that doesn't feature any nudity at all. So that's, you know, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, we, we did that. That was our anniversary on the 13th, 13 years on the 13th on Friday, 13th, you know, but, um, and we've been watching, still getting through some anime. We, um, we, I, I, I don't know if I said I finished gamers last time. I'm not sure, but, um, but yeah, I actually yes, finished you did. You before did. I saw. I did mm-hmm. about how I thought the last episode was completely ridiculously stupid, and I hated it, it. You hated it, but then you understood it because it was like DLC. Oh well, yeah, but <laughs> I, <laughs> see, see, you in that moment you went, oh yeah, I did say that. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, yeah, I understand what they were doing, but it was so stupid. Like it is, they, they should have like put it into like an OVA or something be like, it's separate from the show because it, it'll make people think that it's actually like, like I was that they were going to wrap up more stuff and they didn't. And, and it's kind of a show kind of like Neo Yokio to where it's slice of life kind of comedy type show. You know what I mean? It's not like an action show, but, but I, I, I thought it was pretty funny, but it seems like it's probably better, a lot better than I, I haven't watched Neo Yokio yet. So, Neo Yokio is well. I I don't really have much to compare it to because I don't watch much anime. So I so I'm yeah, but I'm pretty sure it's something like this to where it's it, it well not not that I'm comparing it in quality, but it's like Persona without all the demons and shit, you know. <laughs> but um, but but yeah, um, we were watching one called I I need to get back to writing notes. Oh. I finished Ruby, the the, the Rooster Teeth joint. Mm-hmm. I actually really liked it. Actually, the even though I said I don't really like it in the beginning, the animation in the beginning is not that good. Not that it's like they were untalented or whatever. It's just they probably didn't have the equipment in 2013, and you know all the episodes were like three or four minutes, so it was kind of very... like, like how Red versus Blue went from we're recording this while while playing Halo. To now we have like fucking animation and shit like that. You know what's what is that shit called that they use for animations? Um, shit, what is that called? Like professionals use it for like for like uh, computer animated stuff. Um, is it Afterworks? No. Um, you you know what you you keep talking. I'll find. Okay, but but yeah, I, I really um I really dig it because after. It, the animation gets a little bit better. Each season, it gets a little bit better. And then by season three, they had a lot of the animation pretty much pretty good. It still had that same the art style that they were going for in the original. But I, I would say it's on par to like how, how Persona Five looks, to where it's it's not going to look like Horizon Zero Dawn or anything ultra realistic. But it's going to like look really pretty and stylized that way, to where because. It's not drawn, you know, like, you know, Dragon Ball Z is drawn it's, with. Uh, it's uh, Maya. Maya. I've never even heard of that. You never heard of Maya? Maya uh-uh. is like a, it's a software that you do, that you do computer animation um, with. And a lot of professionals use like some version of that and stuff. Like animated shit that you actually. Cool. May, I mean, that might be something I can get into. Cause I mean, I was in the graphic design and stuff. And I mean, yeah, graphic design is like making a flyer you know Mm -hmm. but like you know it would be cool to do some animation or something you know some i've been really itching to do something creative for a while but but anyway like in season three and four the animation gets really good and the story gets more i mean because it's kind of hard to like tell because it felt like in the first season it was like here's an episode it's done here's the episode it's done You, you know it was really short bursts like three or four minutes at most six is really short for an episode. So it, it's, uh, it was almost like two or three episodes is like one episode of a normal show. But, but once season four, it, it got more closer to the 16 to 20 minute long. And, um, so they got better at their, I don't know. It, and <clears throat> I like the characters and all, I mean, the characters are really good. Cause, um, and what Ruby means is e- even though the main character's name is Ruby, the, um, the whole R W B Y is each character 
in that group or whatever. So, but it's good. I dig it. And, you so know, Ru- season Ruby, five. Um, you, Ruby was made using other software. They use, I guess they just, they use two softwares for animation. One is Maya. And I think Maya is for like older stuff. And then they switched to one that's called Poser. Oh, okay. Cool. But that, but that, that is what they use. Cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I watched the new episode, the season five. And, um, I, I guess for everybody else, like looking at it on YouTube or whatever, it's going to come out on Saturday. But since I'm a Verb subscriber, I watched it last Saturday. So, um, so yeah, it, I mean, it was a good episode, you know. And season four was pretty much setting up season five, basically. But um, I don't know. I, I'd say give it a shot. I mean, even if you weren't really into Rooster Teeth stuff, it's not. It's almost kind of like a, an offshoot of Rooster Teeth because, like, the main guys like Bernie and stuff aren't really associated with it, even though they're like producers. And I think they're more hands on with it now, since which it's weird. Remember when I said it's, it, it was kind of like some some shady stuff was going on with, at Rooster Teeth mm-hmm. when it come to Ruby. Well, the creator after like season two, he died, and um, he um, his wife was like working on the show with him, but she was never really an employee of Rooster Teeth, but she was, you know, helping him and like writing stuff and doing, doing a lot of stuff. And then after he died, they wouldn't hire her on after afterwards. Wow. And then, um, like his best friend who was an animator too, I guess he was pissed off at that. And he wrote this big letter or whatever. And then they fired him. And so, um, in, I, and I think some other people, because of that, some other people left and stuff. So, but, um, but which, which is, which kind of sucked, but it also makes me feel weird that after like season three and four, it gets really good. So I'm like, don't know, really know how to feel, right. <laughs> but, um, cause it, cause it was weird that like the creator, they wanted to do this thing. And then the guys at Rooster Teeth was like, okay, you need to get done with Red versus Boo season, whatever, before you can do any of that kind of stuff. So he, he, they got done with that. So he did it. So he was pretty much doing it on his own with a few, few of the other people. And they were like, yeah, you can do your little thing, you know, kind of thing. But now all of a sudden that it got a little popular. Now it's like, it's like Rooster Teeth's biggest thing other than Red versus Blue, you know. Now it's, you know, now you have Ruby video games and Ruby merchandise and, you know, it, and Ruby manga. Okay. It, it's, it, it just feels dirty, you know. But, but, um, but I don't know. I mean, I'm not those guys. I, like, like you said, like we were talking about before, like even though they're not, well, at least I don't know <laughs> them being like, you know, racist or or, or um, rapist or or Nazis or something. But um, no, I'm, I'm not gonna say any of that stuff. I, they, I, I, as I understand it, they're just kind of no, no. no I, I didn't say you said that. Mm-hmm. I, I was just saying removing the art from the artist type thing, mm-hmm. to where you can be like, that guy's a piece of shit. But he's kind of a genius when it comes to making movies, you know what I mean, type thing. You know how you can be like, you, you can like Roman Polanski's, like you can like, you know, Rosemary's Baby as being an excellent film or The Pianist, but also say, <laughs> yeah, that dude's a piece of shit because he, you know, fucked a 13 year old, you know, type thing. <laughs> All right, come on, let's let's wrap this up. You spent way too much time on it. I was but trying yeah, to be, I was trying to be an hour, and you and you you stretched this whole Ruby thing the fuck out right there. That's that, that's what you wanted me to do because you were you were like, I don't have much to talk about. Let let's see if we can do this. I thought that we were going to be able to do this in an hour. You say that every time. <laughs> I'm finished. Go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the. Um, but yeah, I'm done with Ruby, and I, I I started up on Psychopaths, but I don't have much to say about that yet. But it it's pretty fucked up, and I, I'm kind of liking it so far. So I'll have more to say about that later. Okay, you finished? But yeah, yeah, I'm finished. I'm go- I'm I'm going to be watching something else soon. I haven't picked out the next thing that I'm. I need to get to those other TV shows though. That's gonna take a, that's gonna take up a little bit of time once I actually get that going. Um, but I want to start something new. There's so much stuff out there to watch, and I find myself like my girlfriend is watching um, Daredevil. 
Mm-hmm. Um, she stopped for a while, and then and then she just she just finished season one, and now she's like all the way in on season two. And it's kind of funny because I, I watched one episode. Well, I watched an episode in like an episode and a half with yesterday. Yesterday, um, and like you know, seeing like the Punisher and stuff like that. Uh, is like I forgot a lot of that stuff because you know I don't watch Luke Cage, I don't watch Iron Fist, I don't watch you know like I, I watch Jessica Jones. Like I'm already through all of this shit. So and I watch the Defenders, which is another example. Of, uh, well, is is the better way to do six episodes? Like I get it, you're gonna do six episodes at least. Let them be. Um, right. Um, you know, like that type of thing, but, uh, it's just weird, like seeing, like after watching the Defender, seeing, um, seeing Foggy with his long hair, like, you know, that type of stuff, like just the, the little things that matter and being able to, being able to, uh, watch this and spot the Stan Lee poster. Yeah. So, like, you know, that type of stuff, but I'm going to, I'm going to try to watch something else new soon. They did put another season of Gotham on, um, on Netflix, but. Um, you know, I, I, I was using that when I had insomnia and I probably will use that if I'm, if I'm sleeping. I mean, if I'm not, if I'm not going to sleep, I'll probably use Gotham to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's really, it's like, like, it's like the greatest, it's, it was like the greatest cure for insomnia because I was interested in what I was watching. It just put me to sleep. So, all right. So, um, I, I think that's it for us. Yeah. Uh, I have one more thing to say, which was, um, these motherfuckers. Are trying to change Neil Young's name to Stand Young. Why? Neil Young, Stand Young. Huh? <laughs> oh, goddamn! <laughs> <laughs> it took it took me a minute. Uh, yeah, you got me. You, yeah, you, you got me. Oh, <laughs> Don't get me started on your boy. For I want it's every every day. It's just like, bruh, like, like how how does like. Have, have you ever, did you ever imagine that the president would be in the news every day for something that just makes you go, what the fuck? Like, it's like every day is just like, what the fuck? And it's like the only thing that you can say about it, because like a lot of the stuff is just kind of crazy. And then you wonder, like, why do people still support this dude? Like, how can you still support this dude? Because every day he's in the news and you're just like, what the fuck? Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. I, I saw I saw a really good political cartoon today. Um, and it is, um, is 45 standing over a, what looks like the, the grave of a soldier, um, because uh-huh. it had, it had the casket and it had the, the American flag over, over it. And it has him just leaning over the, uh, and it just says, this is really hard on me. Um, yeah. Yeah, really. It has 45 saying this is really hard on me. Um, yeah. All right. Um, I, uh, yeah, we're going to wrap this up. Um, thank you every mu- everyone who is listening to the show right now. Um, you know, for wherever you are, whenever you are, thank you for checking us out. Um, I see, I promised I was not going to say anything too crazy and I did not because like, I'm, I'm thinking about just cutting the 45 talk on facetious altogether. And I'm, and I'm thinking about not discussing the kneeling ever again. Yeah. That's, that's kind of how I am with a lot of stuff like that. Like, when people just talk about stuff, I'm just like, yeah, you know, you know, well, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's pretty much my, my input. <laughs> yeah. I just, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm done. I'm, I'm done with the whole devil's advocate thing. Like that's my, that's my biggest problem with it. I'm done with the whole devil's advocate. Like someone was like, well, if you look at it from the other side or plain devil's advocate, no, you don't have to. The devil doesn't need an advocate. Sorry. Like, for real. And here's the worst thing about Devil's Advocate. Have you ever noticed that it's always the most religious people that you know that always try to play Devil's Advocate? <laughs> that is pretty ironic, isn't it? Yeah, very, very ironic. But yeah, it, it's it's just kind of weird. But all right, so um, that's that's, uh, that's the show. Um, so uh, thank you for checking your boy out. Um, for for the homie Chase, I'm Scarfinger. This is Scarcasm, and we're out of here. Peace out to the later. Don't buy those crickets. I like that shit, yeah, boy. I'm telling you, woke. I'm telling. All right, I ain't gonna talk.